It's a clear, breezy morning on the scrubby hills overlooking the Tijuana River Valley. Border Patrol jeeps cruise the dirt roads that switch back up and down the hills along the border fence. Mike McCoy knows this corner of the country well. The 71-year-old veterinarian has spent more than half his life working to protect the estuary formed where the Tijuana River's fresh water meets the salty Pacific Ocean. We're going down toward Smuggler's Gulch. This is probably the, the most uh, difficult cut for them and the most problematic cut for us. By us, he means the environmentalists and local land managers who vigorously fought against the massive earth moving project, which in 2009 filled in the deep gulch and built a road across it in the name of border security. Before, it was going down these switchbacks. And that took a long time. This way, they just fly right through here. By they, McCoy means Border Patrol agents scouting the area for illegal smuggling. Starting in the 1990s, this place became ground zero in the battle over how to secure the border against illegal immigration and drug trafficking. Back then, hundreds of illegal crossers swarmed down the hills nightly from Tijuana. Then 9-11 happened, and concerns mounted about terrorists coming in through porous borders. As a result, Congress ordered a fence built across 700 miles of the southern border, in addition to San Diego's fortified triple fence that was already planned. Opponents of the fence here had slowed construction down for years through public outcry and lawsuits. Frustrated, Congress passed legislation giving the Department of Homeland Security the right to waive all legal requirements in order to expedite construction. And that removed uh, a major tool of environmentalists and others opposed to the construction. And it um, really removed many of the requirements for an open process, for public hearings, things that citizens uh, and communities and environmentalists had fought for. Uh, really from the 70s. Since then, Homeland Security has waived close to 40 federal laws and countless state laws to build new sections of fence all across the U.S.-Mexico border, some of it across federally protected areas and habitat for endangered and threatened species. Now there's talk in Congress of adding 700 new miles of fence along the southern border and giving Homeland Security even more power to waive laws to build it and other border infrastructure. Border Patrol refused to grant an interview for this story, but Sean Moran, vice president of the Border Patrol Union, says fencing is generally just a speed bump. The fence really hasn't cut down on uh, human smuggling because if you build a 20-foot fence, uh, the smuggling organizations, they just build a 21-foot ladder and they get the people over it. But Moran says the contentious San Diego fence was needed. Illegal traffic here has slowed to a trickle. It's moved to Arizona and Texas. And Moran says adding hundreds of miles to the U.S.-Mexico border fence would probably help agents by funneling illegal traffic into areas they can control. It's not the answer to border security, but it is a primary tool that the Border Patrol has to slow down things. Mike McCoy admits the impact hasn't been all bad. Illegal crossers used to tromp through sensitive areas here, and he does understand the need for a secure border. I just think that we could have done better with another approach, biologically and ecologically, than what we did with this approach. What really rankles McCoy is the supreme trump card held by one federal agency, the Department of Homeland Security. It's kind of my way or the highway type thing. And that's not the way America worked to me. We all had a say in what, what went forward. As this year's debate over immigration and border security gets louder, environmental concerns are barely a whisper. Jill Replogle, KPBS News.